Alrighty. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to see you all brave the ice. <laughs> Okay, first thing, is there any changes to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I have a couple, if I may, please. Uh, on the consent agenda, we have add-on warrants this morning of $11,626.85 to commissioner's warrants, $11,626.85 to commissioner's warrants. Um, time changes, a couple changes on there at 10 o'clock. Uh, the 10 o'clock bid opening will be moved to 10.30. That was an error on my part, I apologize for that. I got confused because we're talking about a fuel bid opening too and that's next time. So that'll be at 10.30. So at 10.30, I'm moving the county attorney, uh, Domain Sandy and County Sheriff Keith Bremen discussions up to 10 o'clock. And along with the information that uh, Keith has uh, I had an add an, another item on the bottom, right underneath the 23 city law enforcement contracts action. Please add the MEND, M-E-N-D contract, termination of service, and that's an action item. MEND is the company that is doing the jail medical work for us. And Kathy is out today, so I'll be taking care of um, the minimal personnel item she's got on her, her docket here for today. I've got that on a, on a page, so I'll bring that up when we get to personnel. Those are my changes, okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, if those changes, I'll move the agenda. Yep. yep. Support. Okay. I do have a quick question, though. With the bid opening being advertised for a specific time, we're all right because you've got it on the agenda for the time it was advertised. So we're we're fine with the actual technicality of the bid Correct. opening. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was advertised for a 10:30 bid opening. It's just an error on my part. I put it at the wrong time here. So yep. we can adjust that. So we're still in compliance. Yeah, there. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> with that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Approve the consent agenda. Approve the minutes of 11:22. 22, approve the auditor warrants of 11 23 22, 11 29 22, 12 2 of 22, and 12 9 of 22. Approve the commissioner warrants plus the add on of for today of 11,626.85. 11, approve the hospital warrants of $753,530.10 and approve the November 22 treasurer's report. Mr. Chair, I'd move for approval. I'll support that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Nick. Jody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, first up for me today would be project updates. Um, the 2022 box culvert contract number one with RNG construction, we have scheduled to approve final payment for that one. Um, next project would be the island bridges with frame construction that's on the agenda to approve final payment for as well. Um, we have a bid opening for our first group of box culverts for 2023. And I would like to set a bid opening date for the 2023 overlays, which I have coming up later too. So um, we're getting a lot of projects finaled. That's really good because it's a lot of paperwork. So we can get these, uh, you know, approved and paid by the end of the year. Um, then they don't drag over to next year. So it saves a lot of staff time. So, so that's good. Really good. Um, next item I have is the number of uh, um, right of way payments for approval. Um, as you'll see, there's a bunch of different project numbers there. We have a bunch of, uh, um, you know, a bunch of box culvert projects coming up. So there's a, a bunch of those. Um, you'll see that the dollar amounts um, 
have some range to them there. Um, the bigger ones mainly would be the ones that have fence and then um, temporary easement, I think, on one of them. So, um, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, but um, that's that's what that fluctuation is. <coughs> Move for approval. Okay. I will second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, next up would be a uh, request to approve final payment for the bridges on County Road 2 and 20 um, down by Island. Um, the final payment amount is $101,090.38. Um, as you see, that project came in just uh, here under the original contract amount, so we're pretty much right on track with that. Um, this is the one where we I talked about, I think it was last meeting, we um, did some trading with the contractor on the late for the extra bridge demo removal, which you know, I still feel is a very fair trade. So, yeah, Considering all the difficulties they ran into there to be able to come in a little under budget, that's terrific. Yep, yep, so um, you know, it took longer than we'd like to see, obviously, but when you're dealt those conditions, you know, sometimes that, that's how it goes. So all in all, I'm happy with it. Um, it's a really nice bridge. Um, I think it sets us up for a possible grant in the future to maybe widen that side of the road a little bit and get a paved shoulder down to the state park. So um, that's something I'll talk about later when that gets a little bit closer. But um, I think that would be a great project that could be uh, relatively economical cost-wise for you know, what things cost today. But um, you know, I think there's some some grant money available, some good opportunities for that. That we'll start pursuing when the time comes. So. We'd mentioned before that bituminous minutes tore up so much in between the West Ridge and the railroad tracks. Have you got a plan for that? Yes, then, that will be redone this year. Um, there's different different things happening in different segments, but there's some milling, there's some removal, and um, with everything being so tore up, we're gonna actually widen it out a little bit. Um, we're going to pave a little bit wider shoulder right up to the tracks even so we don't have to worry about doing shoulder work maintenance work in the future so hopefully that limits our dealings with the right or the railroad because that is a challenge all in itself so <laughs> um so yeah it's it's going to be much better down in there when we're done with it here this summer so great yeah that'll be great I'll make a motion to pay this. Yep. And I will second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, next up is um, request to make the final payment for the 2022 box culvert contract number one. Um, these are the ones by Holland, Hatfield, and then one for Sweet Township. Um, final payment amount is $37,533.70. And um, as you see, that one came in uh, a little bit under the original bid amount too. Um, you know, n nothing really stands out at that. You know, sometimes if they don't tear the ground up that as bad as they might need to, you know, then they don't need as much erosion control. and Sometimes the farmers decide to do the fence themselves at the last minute because they have time. So um, that seems to be happening a lot in the last couple of years. It turns out like that. So um, yeah, but nothing alarming that they came in a little bit under. You know, it's good, good for us. So um, I'll move that we approve payment then for contract number one for the culverts. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Um, next up is uh, to approve the final payment for the Indian Lakes Phase Three project um, to Dunnick Incorporated from Prinsburg for six thousand four hundred dollars and thirty three cents. Um, that was the project that the city did that had to be sponsored by us, so we're really just a pass through for that <coughs> to get the grant. So. Um, so yeah, they, um, seems like it turned out good to me. I assume they're happy with it too, but 
um, one step closer to getting that whole loop completed. So, um, so yeah, I guess I don't really have anything else to add to that. So, the, with it being the pass through, then so the so the underage from the original contract, the final payment, then that's not in our account. That's still all in the city's account and just passed through us, or that that difference. Um, you know, I'd have to look, I feel like this process started about three years ago and I can't, I can't remember exactly how that worked, but we'll pull the agreement out and we'll see, uh, um, we'll look up how that's supposed to work. So I didn't done that one. Didn't they ask us to, to cash flow it or is that, am I thinking of a different one? Do you, and it's, it's very close. It's within $400. Oh, right. Which is incredible in itself. <laughs> you know, project that expensive comes in that close to the bid amount. You don't see that very often, but. Um, I'll, I'll move that we approve final payments in for Indian Lakes Project 3. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Jeremy, just a quick question on that now. Do we do the maintenance on the trail now? Like when the nope, uh, concrete does. heaved and broke and all that out there? On our the, segment, yes. On our segment. Yep. On the cemetery, by the cemetery, remember that happened last yeah, summer that blew out? keeps happening, and I, I honestly don't know why. Hmm. I mean, it's, I don't know. I'll sure be happy when I can figure that out, why that keeps <laughs> happening. But. Okay, so that portion of it is ours. Yeah. Okay. R right now, we're just replacing it. We're putting in bigger expansion material on both sides, and we figured that eventually we'll get enough of that out there to where it'll, you know, work, function as it's supposed to. And, you know, it was built to, um, built to the standards. You know how the state says to do it. So I don't, it wasn't a construction issue. You know, they did what they were supposed to do, and I just don't know why it keeps doing that. But. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yep. Um, next up, I'd like to set a bid opening date for 2023 overlays. Um, I squeezed a map in there so you can kind of get an idea. I think it's, I like the visual better than just reading off a list, but I understand it's kind of small, so it's a little difficult to see, but um, you'll see there's a loop outside of Pipestone here to the west, and um, we included County Road 10 up by Ruth, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, this also includes uh, uh, North Hiawatha, the patches on County Road 18, and then County Road 2 from that bridge west of Island over to 75. And then um, it's now County Road 20. Um, if you see kind of on the east side of Island there, it's, I know it's really difficult to see that, but that was one of those turn back roads and that turn back we just did. Um, so now that's now eligible for state aid. So um, we'll be using state aid funds to overlay that segment instead of levying for it. So um, I think that was a good deal for us. So Nick, uh, I see on that, the, that loop going around there, then on the northeast corner then by Casanova, there's a mile and it's not being overlaid. Is that? Yep. That was done a few years ago. We went from CAS over to 75. Okay. So that's what that, um, that that's what that skip or break or whatever you want to call it is, is all about. So that was just, you know, done probably within the last five years, I would say. I can't remember exactly what year, but, but yeah, that's what that is. Mr. Chair, I'd move to set the bid opening at, for 1030 on January 24th. I will second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries to set it for January 24th. And then like I like I pointed out here, I uh, we understand it's a little bit earlier than what we typically see for uh, overlays in the area being open, but I think it might help us get hopefully better prices. And then if we don't like them, we can always reject them and we still have time to re-advertise. So I think it's worth a shot doing it that way. Try to stretch our dollars a little bit, so. <clears throat> um, next up, um, I believe it's included in your packet, uh, policy on tree and brush removal. Um, this has come up recently. Um, I spoke with the Road and Bridge Committee about it. 
Um, so we took a shot at a kind of a policy in writing, I guess you will. Um, point being, we, we recognize we have a duty to keep things clear and open, but we also want to, um, you know, try to keep the peace as best we can with the residents. So um, I don't. I guess this 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 is what we came up with from the um, from the committee. So um, anybody have any comments on it or? Hopefully it'll address some of the issues that we've had. Right. Yes, I'd move for approval. I'll second. Okay. That came, I, that came into play east of Edger a couple of years ago, or maybe 10 years ago already. The right-of-way included the trees of the, of the several farms along there. Okay. And they got them out. <coughs> okay. The landowners weren't happy, but... Yeah, it, it's so tough because like, people don't want to lose these sometimes, but sometimes we really need them for safety or for snow catches or whatever. And like, I don't know. We're we're gonna try this, try to keep everybody happy. But I lost a row of trees when we did two two six eight. The first time he came up with a sign, he took out the whole grove. His right away, he wanted all of them out. And I said, No, that ain't gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. That was a state deal. Sure. When they turned it back to us, <clears throat> they wanted to drill me a new well. They wanted to take my well too. I like this well. And there wasn't this one any, works. Any, yeah. Yeah, any, yeah. Any reason to do it? But yeah. So as long as you're sensitive to the needs of the, of the people. I am because I put myself in that those shoes too. Yeah. Like, well, you can't just. Put, some some trees, has to be full done. grown trees, and you know, like it's when they're gone. If you're they're planting gone. new, yeah, then you can yeah. designate. But. Yeah. So I, I try to be sensitive to everybody, but I mean, sometimes what they want isn't always, unfortunately, isn't always realistic. You know, sometimes we have to do things, but um, it's our effort to be, um, I don't have know, what you want to call it. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, have you, have you coordinated with Kyle somewhat as well, too, on planting trees back, if that might help maybe? mitigate a little bit the, the the loss of the other trees maybe that's a way that we can help i i haven't um that's the landowner's responsibility i would say it, yeah it, it is but well, if you I have a sensitive say. situation if we could help i mean if you're taking them out of the right of way yeah that's you know you're that's the right of way that's the county's that's the right yeah. portion but you, i mean if you're going to plant back, plant you wouldn't be planting right back in the right of way. You'd be planting back on private property, and that really is not our role. No. Yes, but but the thought I had is because of our tree program that we've got through water and soil, if if Kyle could help work with the property owners, because I think he's got programs where he can provide trees for growth, can't he? You know, there might be situations to where we it's worth it in some type of trade for us, but I know like on road projects when we have our appraisals, we usually see like building site with trees yep. come back at a much higher rate than building site without trees or than tillable even. So that to me, that's always meant that while well, they're paying for, or we are paying for the loss of those trees. So, um, you know, they can take that money and pocket it if they want, or we've had people take that money and relocate trees if they're small enough. Um, you know, pine trees, I can think of a specific example on our own job where that happened. Right. So that, that's the point of that additional payment is to compensate for the loss of those. Okay, <clears throat> getting back, we have a motion and a second on the tree policy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next item for me, um, on that overlay approval, that road I referenced by Ruthen at County Road 10, that was scheduled for a regrade. Um, we've been trying to do that, fit that in financially for years while our allotment has gone down a number of times and then the prices are going through the roof. We really thought we could squeak it in there, but it's just looking like it's it's not going to fit very well. We don't really want to levy money to do that. Um, so we, we think that the best, and I've spoken with the Road and Bridge Committee about this, but 
we're thinking the best thing to do is put a thin overlay on it for now and um, you know try to get say 10 15 years out of it and then it'll fit a lot better into our like our big future outlook you know we know when we overlaid roads so we can kind of see when our most need is and there's if we overlaid this now with a thin overlay and got 10 15 years out of it it would fit in that in our program well to to do the regrade then um, it's not like it'd be a total loss you know that material would be there and we'd, we'd grind it up and it'd be less you know aggregate we'd have to buy later so um after discussion with the road and bridge committee we, we think that that's probably the best way to do even though it says it on our five-year plan regrade we'll obviously update that for next year but um and we'd send out a letter too to the residents explaining to them you know what's going to happen or that it's going to be just an overlay instead of a regrade for now but you know we're committed to doing the, the regrade in the future so so I, I don't know that I'd really need any board action from that necessarily. I just, you know, if anybody has any comments or concerns with it, you know, I can get those answered right away. Otherwise, I think we'll just proceed with sending out that letter. It's my understanding we're going to get a little less from the state aid. Yep. Yep. It's down again this year. So, and so the allotment's going down and the prices are going up. Yep. So it's just... Yeah, and, I, and one resident contacted me, I think, last year, and he said, well, we were told that you guys are going to start on this in a year or two or whatever, and I, I, it wasn't me that told them that, so I'm not sure the exact context of, this, of that conversation, but I, I'm guessing what was meant by that is we were going to start the process, which would have meant start the survey and then start the design, and then, you know, and that whole process takes... A number of years to complete and I think they thought that meant we were gonna be turning dirt that next year and like well that's not it doesn't happen that's that not quick. how no our process unfortunately is a little bit more um, strung out than that but um, so if you hear comments that you know, I'm guessing that's what what actually happened or you know what was meant there so mm -hmm. so we'll get a letter sent out then thank you Nick that's that's a good common yep. sense approach to that especially after losing that funding and well it's, it's not very desirable but yeah. <laughs> outcome, but I, I think that's how we have to do it at this point. So. And with that thin overlay, it's not going to create any safety hazards. You're, you're, you're mitigating safety hazards, and that's just... That's yeah, we, I mean, we were doing some patching on it, but, I mean, it's getting to the point where it's like, oh, yeah. like we're spending too much on patching, and that never turns out that great anyway. You know, So I, I think we just do a cheap overlay and get it down into that... Uh, for the rotation. Low in our, our, our funding needs, so, yeah. Okay, that's what we'll do. Um, next up, uh, be some maintenance updates. So over the last month, we've been getting ready for snow. We got the plows and wings and everything on the equipment, so we've been using that. Um, Beginning last month, we uh, did a few culvert separations, and um, well, there's a couple of them west of town on those roads getting overlaid. We wanted to get those done this year, so the trenches had time to settle a little bit before the overlay next year, and we'll patch them, and then we'll do an overlay on it. So hopefully, we end up with a you know, smoother ride in the end. Then um, we cleaned out. There's a culvert clean out on County Road 9, just east of Edgerton. Um, there was some talk about this a while ago, I believe, about the like, storm drain sediment, if you recall. So we, we cleaned out what was in our ditch and you know what we could reach from our right-of-way, and that's, that's where we stopped with it. But we did everything that in our right-of-way anyway. So Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> um, we also removed two beaver dams. Um, they were in our right of way, so um, got those taken care of as well. Um, I attended the annual township meeting on, I don't know, December last Saturday. Second. Last Saturday. It was last Saturday. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was two weeks ago already, but okay. Um, one of the things brought up would be that road that um, we just tiled and put all the gravel on to New Alta Dairy. Um, we had a request to. He said to oil it the whole way, but I, I'm sure he meant dust control. So um, 
we'll do some traffic counts on it. I'll bring that information back at some point, but I, you know, we don't do that anywhere else. I don't, you know, you can certainly consider that if you wanted, but um, maybe it's best after I get the traffic counts and we can know a little bit more what we're dealing with, but that's, that would probably be spendy and then there'd be a number of other areas that would request the same thing, but you know, we can do, I'll do whatever you want, but just, just for discussion or thinking out loud, uh, because of, of the dairy, the high traffic count and so forth, uh, and in light of, of the money that we've invested in that road in the last number of years, uh, what type of relationship do you have with the dairy? Could you enter into a discussion with them about maybe some cost sharing on calcium chloride? I've never talked to the guy before, so you know, I've, there's not much, I guess. Because I guess I'm hoping that, you know, in, in, in and the attempt to be a good neighbor that he'd be willing to maybe contribute a little bit more to that calcium chloride because I, I know that we've got the uh, aggregate tax we can use for some of that but still it, it'd be nice and I know our policy is for the landowner but this is different because we're asking for more than just right in front of his his property I God, if I remember right I think the guy that brought it up said that the dairy pays for dust control in front of his house right is that I were you I, yeah, I was there. We, we were at okay. that meeting, and he might have. I, I think he did elude to that. So, yeah, you know, that's good. I hope he continues to do that. But there's a couple different property owners along that road that that have issues with the dust too. That don't have the calcium chloride on it. Are they right across from each other? I, I they're down a little bit. I think. Yeah. Right. Is the other place right across the road from him? There is okay. Yeah. I'm drawing a blank for yeah. whatever reason, I guess. But but yeah, if, if you get an opportunity, maybe visit with the dairy and, and see what their what their feelings are on that. And again, if we can do a cost share on that. At what point in time do the landowners have to take some personal responsibility for the damage they're doing to the right? Roads? Right. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to bring that up last night with Dave Holstein. Uh, gravel trucks kill their own road when they fix another one, mm -hmm. but they'll be they dump a gravel, gravel, load of gravel on the road they're using. They don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. That road between <laughs> County Nine and the gravel pit is mile and a quarter is all. You know, they could put the first five loads a day on there, and they would Wouldn't save on their equipment. And, yeah. But no, you got to come here and. Yeah. Good point. Okay, well, I will, um, I'll reach out to him at some point then. Um, but like you say, if you start doing one, you're gonna start getting a list of requests. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you can open yeah. up a can of worms. It's pretty expensive. I, is this unique though, because of the high volume of traffic for the dairy, or is that not as unique as we sometimes think it is? The dairy has a little more tra volume of traffic coming in and out than like a pig thing. Yeah, pig pen comes in with just shell corn, and dairy comes in with whole corn, whole plant silage and stuff. Yeah. And bigger volume of stuff going in, bigger volume of stuff coming back out every too. day. Yeah. Milk plus the, the manure. But would it be traffic counts that? get to the level that we typically depends on when you take the traffic count if you take the traffic count when they're chopping silage it's going to be through the roof yeah right so i told our guys to i like it checked in the winter time and then like in the different seasons too so we kind of get a bigger picture of what's all going on because yeah but I mean, winter, it's going to make it's gonna be a totally different silage season versus winter time and when they haul silage they meet each other with semis on the gravel road yeah. You know what happens then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. It's wider and flatter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, I expect to see a really broad number on that, but um, be good information to have. So, um, that is it for me for now. Um, I'll probably be hanging around here yet, but uh, we've been opening at 10.30, so. Um,
That's all I had for today, unless anybody else has questions for me. A couple of questions just under yep. miscellaneous things. You mentioned the beaver dam you took out. Uh, recently we talked about our bounty, and our beaver bounty. Yep. Any feedback on that at all? Haven't increased it? And um, I, I'll send out a letter to the townships just telling them that it, it's going up, but I, I have not done that yet, no. And then the other update is staffing. How are you doing? Are you still a couple guys short yet? Or? We made an offer that was accepted um, last Friday, I believe. Um, we'll, we'll be up to two guys working for us that don't have CDLs yet. Um, typically, we hire people with CDLs, but we can't get anybody to apply with one or, you know, that accepts it or likes our pay range anyway so um that's where we're at we kind of needed you know needed some bodies to get in there and they're good they're good candidates they're just young and like you know have got their cdl yet so and i realize the dot is very specific about cdl licenses but generally are much people, harder to get now yep yeah, but but with some some classes and so forth uh, generally the people can attain it yep yep so the the they're signed up for their classes. I'm not sure exactly how it all works. It's just like having an intern at the sheriff. You know, you gotta grow your own CDL guy now. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. that's where we're at. And that's what businesses are doing too. They're paying for the yep. classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's we tried the other way and there's it just wasn't working. There's no way around it. So um, so we're we're full. Our Monday, I think it is, will be full with the maintenance staff. We, we still don't have a mechanic. Um, that's been open for quite a while now. Um, no applicants on that. So I, I don't know if they don't like the scale or if there's just nobody around I, doing that, that work anymore. I'm not sure. So, But, yeah, we're still short of mechanic. So. Dallas and I sit on the transit advisory committee as well too and one of the things that really surprised me is that with transit uh, they've had people that have had CDLs their whole careers and they go to transit and all they need is the bus endorsement DOT won't let them just do the bus endorsement they have to start from scratch and do the whole program all the way over I mean it's just you, you talk about just no common sense yeah for a part-time job for a part-time job yeah. somebody who's proven they can do the job already <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we run into things like that a lot too, and it's like I don't know, some of that's just someone in a cubicle, like doesn't really not really in tune with what's going on, you know. But yeah, it's it really makes things difficult. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Nick. All right. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, ten thirty. Yep. Waiting for the sheriff or domain. You want to do the personnel? Um, actually, we have a public hearing at 9:30 for the fee schedule. Oh, okay. We should do that. So there's no one here for the public hearing. However, okay. <laughs> okay. I suppose the right thing to do is entertain a motion for open public hearing. Correct. Yep, and I'll second that we go into public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in a public hearing. Okay. Mr. Chairman, by statute, whenever we have a fee schedule change, we have to do a public hearing. So you have two pieces of paper in front of you. One is in, uh, got some highlighted, and the one that is not is the current schedule. So it's list 11, the 1 1 of 23 is listed as draft. Uh, I worked with uh, the department heads, checked with them to see what they needed, worked with Amanda up in the Auditor Treasurer's Office. And first thing that's changing, if you're looking, I'm going to just start on page one of the, of the highlighted sheet. Uh, first thing we'll be doing is credit card processing. That actually got moved and changed from the old one from the bottom of page uh, five to page one. So it's a countywide fee. And the verbiage we're using now is a 4% handling fee and a minimum of a $1 fee for transaction. And the reason that is changing is that we've had people coming in and putting like 50 cents on their credit cards 
and it's we've got to collect the fee on that so the dollar minimum is very common she checked with uh, multiple counties around our southwest area and most of them have already instituted a, a four percent fee if it's that low yeah. so and that's what our regular rate is once you get above a dollar so it's going to be a dollar and right. if it's a 50 cent thing you're going to get charged a buck and four percent so because a lot of times you're being charged a transaction we are fee being charged yes. plus mm -hmm. percentage yeah. So. yeah we're trying not to lose money on credit card right. usage and credit card usage is very popular as you know, nobody carries cash anymore. Now, is there a <laughs> distinction between credit and debit cards? Debit cards, do they charge the fee? Yes. They it's, it's, yeah, so it is the same, debit right. or credit. The fee is charged by our processor right. to us. So whatever, if they're using debit credit, doesn't matter with Visa, Amex. Do you think whatever it would make sense to, to add that verbiage in here, no. credit and debit, or it's no. pretty well understood? No, it doesn't. It's, it's pretty much standard verbiage. Everyone knows what a credit card is, so... So it should be Are you accepting all major kinds of credit cards? Yep. I know one place that won't accept American Express because their fees are too high. Yeah, it's the uh, first uh, it bank and out. trust is our processor, so they're accepting those cards. Okay. Yeah. So we're trying to keep it as seamless we, as we can and trying to help out the customers as, as best we can too and not costing the county a bunch of money in the process. Uh, moving down to Auditor Treasure, the first one listed there is. Uh, uh, certified tax search current and delinquent that was just a verbiage change on that the cost is still the same so it was went from certified delinquent tax search to certified tax search current and delinquent so there are people that do want that done uh, the next one down is confession of judgment repurchase tax forfeited property uh, verbiage was added regarding uh, repurchase tax forfeited property at the request of the auditor's office uh, zoning and environmental uh, Kyle was contacted on this and he requested that the septic permit be increased $50 to $200 for 2023 and then also the feedlot permit equal or greater than 300 animal units also be increased $50 as well to help cover time and effort uh, processing these uh, requests and then as you flip through not going to be any changes until we get to the very and so there weren't a whole lot of changes going on. Most of the departments didn't have any changes. The last one on there on the back page is uh, uh, from EMS. They changed their rates a little bit for January 1st of 23 for education. And I believe, double check here. Entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that a motion. I don't see anything different. No. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Move to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. To close. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is 9.39. Okay, we're back in regular session. Thank you. And we have Casey here. Good morning, morning. Mr. Board, members of the chair. <coughs> Thank you for having me. Um, the reason why I'm here this morning is Christmas weekend. Um, obviously, we all know Christmas Eve is on a Saturday and Christmas Day is on a Sunday. And it also happens to fall within our scheduling on a volunteer weekend. Um, you know, all of our full-time staff already do several holidays and whatnot, so I don't think any of them are interested in picking up extra. And we do have the majority of the weekend, I think, filled so far with volunteers, but it's kind of been piecing it together um, in small increments for the majority of it. <clears throat> um, so I guess what I am asking after discussing this previously with Steve and Kathy is a temporary one-time um, on-call pay increase 
for both the primary crew and the backup. Um, the reason for the backup pay also is because we can't take a transfer unless we have two crews in place. And I mean, like right now, one of the crews is on their way to Marshall, so we have a, an additional crew in place for if there's another emergency. Um, so with that, um, when I discussed it with Steve and Kathy, we talked about um, basically quadrupling the normal rate for just that weekend, um, Friday 6 p.m. through Monday morning at 6 a.m. Um, I did run the numbers and we should still be under budget um, with I had the auditor's office give me the latest and greatest account activity report and what our total was. So for the um, the part-time budget, we should still be under with this temporary increase. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything regarding it? Casey, what, what specifically is a volunteer weekend? What makes that different than a regular weekend? So with what we currently have for our full-time staff, um, two of the three weekends are staffed by the full-time members. Um, the evenings currently are still volunteer, but usually, or the weekend evenings are still volunteer typically, but oftentimes if the full-time staff is working the Saturday day and the Sunday day, they'll usually end up picking the overnight shift up as well. Um, but every third weekend is 100% volunteer. And that's a rotation that you do to give our full-time people a weekend break. Yes. Okay. I guess my only concern, and, and, and I, I do agree, you know, asking people to give up their holidays, uh, this is, I, I support doing this. My concern is, are we going to set a precedent for other weekends? Are we going to have people later on saying, well, it might not be a holiday weekend, but I really would like more to have my weekend tied up to be a volunteer on that weekend? You know, I don't believe so. Um, it's pretty rare that we have both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day on the actual Saturday and Sunday. Um, and as you know, we are increasing our staffing with um, more full-time and more part-time staff, which really should eliminate this because all the weekend day shifts will be staffed. Um, and on the full-time weekends, both the days and nights will be staffed. Uh, the part-time weekends, the day shift will be staffed, and then, I mean, the night shift will be on call. But I think we can all agree probably that Christmas weekend is a little more family-oriented and more important than any of the other holiday weekends. For example, the next weekend, which is going to be New Year's, Correct. Eve, New Year's Day. Yep, that's, that's not the same. Situation. Very much so. That weekend happens to fall on our regular staff <clears throat> instead of on the volunteer staff. Yes. I agree with this as long as they, it's communicated that it's a temporary. It's just, yep. just a one-time deal. Yep. We have an ambulance meeting tonight, so this will be very thoroughly explained to everybody. And I guess if you would express to them, again, our appreciation for the work that they do, and this is just one one yep. small way that we can rep that we Absolutely. Can, can support them in that. So with, with that being said, Mr. Chai, I will move that we approve this one time. And I'll, and I'll second that. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Casey. Drive safe, everyone. Yes. <laughs> What's it doing out there? Still raining. Yep. Still raining. Okay. What's it doing? <laughs> I didn't, I'm not sure. I think it's still hovering around 33, 34. Still raining, huh? Okay. Yeah. A lot of trees out there. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. You want to do the personnel? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in Kathy's absence today, she's home taking care of kids uh, on, a, on a rotten day. A couple of updates she wanted me to bring forward. Uh, first uh, section is under EMS hiring, as Casey's still here. Uh, Part-time employees, uh, we have Jessica Foss was hired December 9th at Step A as a part-time EMT, correct? Jessica's right. EMT? Okay. And Riley Budin was hired as of 1210 as part time EMT as well. And the request there is to, with his 
years of experience he has with the service, they would like to hire him at step C on the pay plan for part time. So a motion would be in order to accept that. Riley Budin at step C on the EMT EMS pay plan. I will questions. Move. I will move that, Mr. Chair. I will move that. Second. Okay. Discussion. Uh, what are part time hours considered then? Casey, can you want to come on up here? Appreciate that. She had her coat on. She thought she was going to nah, slip she's out of here. Not that quick. <laughs> <clears throat> so I should have brought a schedule with. I didn't even think of that. But um, with the new scheduling that we'll be going to with the addition of staff, um, the full-time members will be doing basically one 24-hour shift and then an additional 12-hour where they're at the station and 12 hours of call. Um, the part-time shifts are a dedicated on a four-week rotation. It does not exceed more than one 12-hour shift per week. Um, so like on the first weekend or the first week, it would be a Saturday. The following week, the Sunday. So it's the weekend together. And then the following week, a Monday. And the fourth week, it would be a Friday. So this is just to help augment um, and with... I believe we have four part-time staff that were interested and had applied. I mean, the more we have, the more we can spread them out as well. But it, the 12-hour week should not have any other implications in terms of benefits or anything like that. How about if there's if there's a, a higher demand and you need to pull the part-time people in and have work more than those 12 hours? Will that come up from time to time, perhaps? That may. Um, with you know, with full-time staff being sick or having vacations or anything like or that. Call demand or something. Yep, like, it's know. possible. But um, Kathy has done the homework on this, and um, as long as they are not to exceed 14 hours for half of the year, if they have an average of more than 14 hours for more than half the year, then I think the benefit part kicks in is my understanding the week yes right. 14 hours a week if they average more than that for over half the year then it would kick in so there shouldn't be any implications with that and if, and if you would maybe make a mental note of that as you go through the year to make sure that we don't yep. encroach on that 14 hours yes we track it pretty closely mm -hmm. Good. is there any such thing as overtime I know sometimes you're on their hours end when they're in transfer or no there shouldn't be it would still be straight straight paid hours straight time okay I'll call the question yep all in favor aye aye opposed motion carries okay. there you go Casey as Casey's still here just mention too that uh, uh, part-time EMT Chris Amon uh, started on 12 12 at step a of the pay plan Another part-time EMT, Jocelyn Russell, will be starting later this month. Uh, it's not listed where she'll be on the pay plan. I presume it'll be an A. It'll be A. Okay. okay. And full-time employees, they have uh, two people listed here. Approve uh, J.D. Wallenberg's salary at Step E of the pay plan. He is a paramedic with 13 years of experience, and he will be put on as full-time. And you might recognize the name Wallenberg from Jasper. Right. Just <coughs> so uh, again, we need board action on this because it's step E of the pay plan to approve J.D. Wallenberg, uh, step E of the plan. Uh, when's he starting? January 3rd. January 3rd. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'll move that we accept that part. Step E, you said? Yes, yeah, step E. Yep. I'll support that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you for that. I think yeah. that's it. I think so. We and uh, oh, excuse me. Morgan Lyman is starting next week, Monday, twelve nineteen, as a full time EMT on Step B of the pay plan. So that does not require board action, either A or B. So it sounds like you're pretty well full staffed all of a sudden. Yay! Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> it. I think we're moving in a great direction, mm -hmm. and I know with the EMT and EMR classes this spring too, we've had a lot of interest in those. Good. So <clears throat> we're moving forward. Things are going well, knock on wood. <laughs> so we very much appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
A couple more uh, personnel items to bring up at highway hiring. Nick kind of alluded to this. Uh, uh, Philip Waldron started last Monday, 12-5, as a full-time highway maintenance worker at Step A of the pay plan. Board action not required on that. And she said, we have one more offer out for a maintenance worker, and if the background check comes back, uh, he will start on Monday the 19th. So at uh, our meeting of the 27th, she'll be able to uh, let you know who it was. Are they still looking for a mechanic, or have they got Yes, Nick help? reported that they're still looking for mechanics. So anyone knows any mechanics like to work for the county get a hold of Kathy or Nick See, looking for that that's being a tough one to fill and that's it for personnel items the only other thing personnel relate well not necessarily but Kathy is looking for volunteers from the county board to go around after the meeting today and go uh, vote on the 2022 Dorg decoration awards uh, to see who had the most creative door, the most holiday cheer, the best dressed door, the best try, the funniest, and also the lump of coal for those that didn't participate at all. And so the, the overall favorites are going to get a trophy. So it's just kind of a fun thing. And so the board members after the meeting would be willing to run around and take a look at the doors for here in the highway shop and EMS and That'd be nice to do. I think you guys did it last year. It was kind of last year. I don't remember who the winners were last year. I, I do remember Keith's yeah, door, though. Cool. Yeah, you got the one. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> and Keith, did you get first last year oh, for yours? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Should we just take a 10 minute break quick and then be at 10 o'clock? Sure. We can... Yeah, that's fine. Well, it's been a long yeah, time since we've had you up to the table. Yes. That means you're doing a really good job with all me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at it as a positive, right? Just treading water. We see more of your wife down here than you. That's right. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> Here's the deal. <laughs> she manages the home. She manages everything. So. <laughs> All men live in their wives' houses, you know that. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Any branches in the grove come down last night that you noticed? I, I looked out. I, I already got old trees that are kind of, you know, at 45, 50 degrees to the ground already. And there's some of them that look like they're a lot lower now. Yeah. Told the kids I was going to get the chainsaw and cut one tree down that goes over our, our septic mound. Mm -hmm. So you now you can't even walk underneath it. It's so, it's so you know, horizontal. I have to duck and you can't get the mower underneath it. Well, now it's a little bit more. And one kid's like, no, leave it. It's kind of cool. Like, no, it's got to come down. Yes. Got to be able to mow around them. Yeah. No, so I'm sure I'll be out picking up branches here one of these days again. Just turn the mic down to nothing so that we don't hear us talking. Because if I shut it down, we might not have audio or video because it's not working right. So I just just flip her down. What you got now? <laughs> Did you make copies? Mm -hmm. Okay, just make sure. Oh, not another. I thought it was a letter saying yes. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> no, not good news. No. Okay. Just to kind of put these <laughs> together and give you a comparison of where we're at. Last year, this year, for numbers and yes. what she's got for open cases. So let's give everybody one of these. You know, last night at Truth Taxation, we had this guy that doesn't we hear so often too in comparisons with Rock County with the number of roads and so forth and so yeah. on. And, and the thought occurred to me too. And, 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 uh, Our shares. No, they don't. They don't. They don't have someone on the drug task force. Yes. And because they don't have anybody on the drug task force, the drug task force doesn't go into Rock County to do enforcement. We we haul ours down there. That's right. right. Yeah, basically the uh, the drug task force they'll work here, Murray County, Nobles County, and yep. then they'll work with South Dakota officials and the federal officials to get into South Dakota to go back. But Rock County's just a drive-through. Yeah. 
Yep. Sanctuary County. Yep. Basically. Yep. And, and, and that thought occurred to me again. We were talking about roads yesterday. Okay, yeah, you're not comparing apples to apples with us and their roads. And the same they thing don't with, have an ambulance? Oh. It's the same thing with the law enforcement and, yeah. and everything else. It's just not a comparison. So. That just that's Destiny's current caseload. Then she's got last year's numbers and then this year's numbers on the okay. check sheets. You know, so we'll kind of explain that to you when we get back on the record. Well, I don't know. know. Did they they that 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 were those were those stranger or were that uh -oh. family things? No, that was a that was a local guy and a local lady. Um, it happened on okay. West Highway 30 to come back from Flandreau, and oh. he jumped dumped he dumped his vehicle in the ditch and rolled it. She got thrown and killed on the roadside. Yep, I do remember that. His name was Derby. So, uh, these, I don't have the prints. Oh. I don't even have those figures. I bet it's a small amount. Yeah. Usually, you figure okay, on average approximately oh, yeah, eight to 10 people a year in Pipestone County get into the sentencing guidelines where it's a mandatory commit to prison. Like this, eight to 10. Yes, about 10 average, yeah. I mean, I, I keep a file. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, when someone goes to prison, I move it to a you know, committed file so sure. I can keep track of everybody. And, and then I have the year they go and what they, you know, and just their entire file most years there. So, I mean, the biggest comment I get from the public is that we see the same names right. time and time order. again. Yeah. And they never seem to get sent. I mean, it doesn't seem to matter what you're charged with. Punishment's the same. Fine, time served. Yeah. Yeah, slap on the hand. Carry on. It's understandable. And that's that's just a lack of understanding of what works in the criminal justice system and, and the guidelines that we, you know, what, where we're stuck. So, but that that's just that's pretty pretty typical. Or, or even when they report in the paper that they waived the mandatory minimum sentence. If it's mandatory, you got a minimum. Well, usually, what's waived is the mandatory minimum is the fine. Okay, but I, I, in some cases, it's yeah. fine. Jail. Sometimes you'll deviate, you'll depart from a presumptive um, sentence sometimes, sometimes, but that's the rarity and not the norm. Yeah. No, but usually what gets waived yeah. is the oh, yeah, exactly. fines are prohibitive. Right. For someone that oh, does oh, hard, you got to do 30%, so on a $10,000 felony, if you fine them $3,000, well, they're never going to pay it. So it's just going to go to collections. Right. You know, so yeah. fines are usually yeah. worse. They don't yeah. work. Right. I think I sat one by there. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. No, we don't have Chris. Yeah. 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 How's everything been going? Yeah. Pretty good. Oh, perfect. You know what? I've got a heater. Uh, what time is that? Living the same yeah. like every day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, the only thing out there was for like 2019. We had some yeah. stuff out there. I, I know it was as well. Of course, yeah. 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 Up in there, so. You're done here. Check with Wayne. I'm yeah, going to show He's out there right now. He's Wayne Duck, they call her, right? Yeah. Yeah. We use it, but we like Remember, we got the grill fired up. We were pulling off the wall. Yeah. Like yeah. On, the, on the west wall. Probably two meters down from the Get yourself at, uh, you know, there's like magical spots where it's just flushes for the winter. Almost like the end target. Yeah, that was just Okay. I told her a triple a while back. I said it kind of takes the glamour out of them wintering in the snow when your address has lots of whatever because you're in a campground in a mobile home park. Packed in next to everybody that you only got enough room between the trailers and the campers like that. Check the way. The other Bush Miller here a couple of years ago. Back I think you had that on video, didn't you? Yeah. That was that was not accident. Just don't rub it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we All we it. hear is snow roars. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Well, absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna be tight. Really, Keith, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do Tyler first. So we'll get him back upstairs and get to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can do that. Can do that. All right, let me bring the volume back up. 
Front and center, big guy. <laughs> okay. Ready. We're back in session, and we have Tyler to give us a presentation here. Yeah, just for information, I was joking with Steve yesterday. I kind of feel like the reaper of bad news whenever I come down here. I seem to never have anything good for you guys. Uh, but MEND did give us a 90-day notice. They filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which MEND is our medical care that we have in the jail. So we just got to finally going. Yeah, and the thing is, like, we were actually going fairly smooth here, you know, because it's been about six months, give or take, right. when we started with them. So we finally got all the paperwork down and stuff was going smooth, like, the service is good. We are happy with things going on. Um, but yeah, they uh, let us know last week, I believe it was Monday, I got a phone call and they told us that they filed and uh, they are given a 90 day notice. And I was also, I'm very much under the impression that they're not gonna last 90 days in bankruptcy. So the search is on, it's on quickly. We're gonna have to figure something out relatively quickly. Um, we took a look at a couple outside options as far as local doctors and whatnot. We're not sure we're gonna be able to make that work. Um, the other option is ACH, which is the other company I had a quote for when we came down in April or May. Um, I'm getting a new quote from them. From what I've been hearing though, they know that blood's in the water and those prices have gone up as right, well, right. just because they know that that's about the only option now for a lot of these people. Um, came down to liability insurance for men too. Yeah. Just consult yeah. online. And can you refresh my memory? Previously, we had Pipestone County Medical Center yes. do it, but we found out six months ago we couldn't do that again. What was the reason for that? Liability it was, insurance. It was a liability doctors. insurance thing, and that was because it was two county-owned entities. Is that no, why? No, no. Doctors belong to Avera. Avera wouldn't allow all their doctors to work in the jail or not. They wanted the county to to provide the doctors the liability insurance and mcit says no we don't do that they provide the liability insurance right. for them not the other way around so there was no yeah. there was no insurance that mcit could cover on it so it was not an option to yeah. do that that's the way they wanted it right ultimately um we did meet about probably 15 counties in wilmer last week and everybody going through every option that they wow know of trying to figure stuff out and basically what has come down to so far is companies that currently work outside of minnesota don't want to come to minnesota because of everything going on um there's some smaller uh hospital okay I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head so i apologize but there's some smaller hospitals that were willing to do it for some of the jails but they need to have their designated hospital in their town in order to do it so that's also not an option for us um, it sounds like a lot of the counties are putting their eggs in the ACH basket. Like I said, I don't have a quote right now. Uh, I'm, hopefully we'll have one in the next week or so. But We're, we're hoping we're, that there's 14 new jails for them that they can make some kind of deal. But yeah. Right, and that's, that's... We're hoping. I was supposed to have another meeting uh, tomorrow with just like the 5th District down in our area. But due to weather, we postponed that. But what we're hoping is if we can... Uh, get kind of a package deal if all of us are looking to go that way maybe the cost would come down a bit you know I can't I obviously can't guarantee that either but that's kind of our hope in talking with ACH so right now it's up in the air but we're working on it and we need to figure out some relatively quickly so kind of a high priority very high priority right now we yeah. had our jail inspection last uh, Wednesday we had our jail inspection went very well but we asked them about it and so that's your problem basically you either get a doctor or you shut down we shut you down so yeah which i don't know a lot of counties are having that same problem obviously men men contracted i think it was 22 counties or something like that so that's a lot of counties in minnesota that the doc is saying well you just can't run then i mean that's yeah. we thought maybe they would be more helpful than what they're being i guess as well but overall on a side note too yeah the jail inspection went very well as far as i was concerned so i was pretty happy with this is just information yeah no action needed i just want to make sure you guys knew about it and that we're working on it we got we're gonna figure out something try to so is there Thank any you. questions hope to see you on the 27th with the proposal <laughs> i hope so too i hope so too is there another company that's going to swoop in and pick them all up or don't know yet for sure we're open but we're well yeah, we're it sounds like that. ach is going to be that company and like i said they kind of know that some of the counties are stuck the with their options they're only game in town then right okay. So but it's almost a monopoly. Their almost. liability insurance just went really high too, though. And that's the bottom line is just insurance is 
is breaking them. So. Right. Like you say, the blood's out, the sharks are coming. Yeah. So well, that, Keith, just on the facetious side, we talked before about our CDL people have to grow our own CDL people. Well, why don't you just go to medical school and get you, get you, you know, just grow our own doctor? Go <laughs> <laughs> and get insurance problems. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, Tyler. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Everybody's got a copy of the contract. Yeah. Okay, I got all the all the outlying city contracts all signed. I just have to have you guys approve them. Uh, give you the numbers quick. It's it's about a six percent right. increase because that's just. Um, and you've met with all the various city councils and so forth. Yeah, they're all signed. Yep. Everything's ready to go. So um, I can give you the, the, the numbers if that's the dollar amounts for each city, if that's what you want. I, um, I don't okay. think that's necessary. It's okay. No. Okay. All right. So I, it's all in the sheet. Yep. Um, yeah. Last year's versus this year per person cost. Population's changed this year because of the new census. Yep. So right. It changed every 10 years. Um, yeah. It's nice. It's about a, about a 6%, I think, for not everybody. So. And again, it, it, it works well for, for everybody involved. There's yeah. no way the municipals could do it themselves, and, and the added income does help augment some of our expenses. So I, I think it's a good program, and I appreciate what you guys do. Mr. Chair, I'd move to approve the contracts with yep. the small cities and all the cities. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. You need signatures at some point from yeah, here you are. Les and myself. Just leave them here. I'll bring them up. Thank you. Perfect. Now we have you here for a salary discussion. Well, like I said, every year since I've been here, you guys support me and the sheriff's office very well, and I'm very thankful for, for this board and for this county. Um, so I don't care no matter what. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about that. The only thing I kind of worry about is the position probably needs to keep ahead of the employees. And, you know, right. personally, and I don't care, but the position, because someday somebody else is going to have to want to run the, for this job. And if there's no difference there, why would yeah. you? Why would you run for it? I mean, yeah. so that, that's my only concern. Not not that you're not taking care of them because you are, but but the position probably should have be looked at a little bit wise. So. Right. Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, we do not have access to the uh, AMC salary survey like we've had in the past. That is not available as you're going through some sort of a software upgrade, so we don't have it. I did do some chatting with Kathy about it, and. She did some like unscientific looking around the area and a reasonable amount for where Keith has been and where he um, should be, should be probably about 5% this year, increased to 108.675 to help him keep up with the other sheriffs around our right. area in the Southwest District as well. And that was what we used for budget figures, wasn't it? That 5% was in that budget range? Uh, I don't recall what Keith budgeted for it. I, I don't re recall yeah. either. I don't remember what you put down, to be honest with you, right off hand. And what was the percentage uh, that we did with our unions? Two and, two and, a, half. Two and a half. Okay. And they get a two and a half percent step increase. So it's not an apples to apples comparison, no, is what you're saying? No, it's not. No, your elected officials are, are taken care of differently, just like you yep. are with your salaries as well. Um, this is an annual requirement that we do this. Right. And it's, <clears throat> last year, I believe, that was a 5% increase as well because we were it was much lower last year. So we made a little bit of headway, but still low for the region too. Yep. Well, can, can we infer then you said it was a 2.5% step increase and a 2.5% union. So can we add those together and come up with 5% or it doesn't work? The math well, doesn't what, work that way. That's what they're getting. Yeah. yeah. Good. So. 
uh, you know, I guess in, in light of that and with the study that Steve has done, and I agree with Keith that we need to make sure that this position stays comparable with other positions. Uh, and it's going to work in the budget. Uh, we don't know exactly what's in the budget amount there, but you could make that work in the budget. It's not that big an increase. So in light of all those factors, I will move that we do approve a 5% increase for Fort Sheriff Bremen's salary. I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you for the work you do for us. And you realize now you have to work another eight years. <laughs> Four years at a time, yeah. right? <laughs> I do appreciate the support I get. We appreciate Thank you, you what you've done for the county. Absolutely. There it is. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> Did you find what you're looking for over there? Uh, yes, pen. my pen fell down and it was oh, like no. black on black, so I couldn't see it. <laughs> Next, we have our county attorney, Domain. And I've asked Destiny to join too, so she can, you know, I gave you some figures here that shows you a little bit about how our prosecution is. Come on up. Destiny, yeah, come up so you can be on a mic, please. So yeah, she put together basically this year's prosecutions. You know, we're looking at the adult stuff. She didn't look at the juvenile stuff. Um, but it gives you an idea that we are down a little bit, but we are still way up over our average. Um, you know, if we go back 10, 15 years where the average is, it is still very busy. And, uh, you know, Keith and, and the Sheriff's Department, um, I think, you know, if Keith would tell you their ICRs or their incoming complaint reports are down, but the volume is still there with all the work they're doing out there with the arrests and the uh, drug enforcement, traffic enforcement. So, you know, they're still driving our numbers a lot. Um, you know, more power to them. Um, probably the best sheriff's department we got in Southwest Minnesota, if not the entire state, as far as I'm concerned. But um, Keith's going to buy me a steak this weekend. That's right. I think. That's right. <laughs> no, but uh, they do a great job, and so we try to keep up with them to support them all we can. So it says something for that department that they're fully staffed. Yeah. We go to state meetings and nobody's fully staffed. I can raise my hand. They asked last time. You know. Mm hmm. They said, well, how do you do that? So like I said, Destiny put these together. So but this is a snapshot of the adults. We're maintaining on uh, like civil commitments for mentally ill and chemically dependent. That really doesn't spike. Um, the juvenile uh, matters are down, um, which is really good. I, you know, I, I contributed a lot to the uh, school liaison officers. Um, having a presence out there at the school does something. Um, but this year, I believe I've only opened maybe, if I think of the last one I opened, 31 or 32 juvenile cases, and the majority of those have been child protection cases. So you're not seeing a lot of the juveniles, you know, doing silly things, committing crimes. And out of that 31, I think there's only been one that's a delinquency as a felony, and that's just because the kid had a little bit of THC resin, which made it a felony. So, but otherwise, the kids are doing good. Um, I'm having a little bit of a plug also for the STARS group that we got at the school and yep. also the alcohol coalition group that we have through Health and Human Services. I, I think that we're seeing some positive effects on that. Yes. All from that on our youth. It's, it's good all the way around. So, you know, I, I would hate to report to you that we're doing 120 juvenile cases like we were doing back in 98, 99, 2000 when I started here. So, but... It, but we have it's been a good keep, trend. We have to keep ourselves grounded as well, too, because we know that this could turn on a, on a dime. Uh, can't rest on our laurels there. Everything's going great. We know that there's a potential out there and, and appreciate what you guys do. Every, everything is cyclical. It can bounce back and go the other way, too. But we've been in a nice lull with juveniles for a while. So budget-wise, um, on the day-to-day -day operations that the county helps reimburse the law firm for, I went 1%. I kept it low. Um, on salaries, as it says, I built into the budget for a new hire because we still are up on the air on what Mr. Berdusen is going to do on the civil side. If he leaves, we're going to be bringing in a new private practice attorney. We're going to be bringing in a new assistant county attorney to help. Mm -hmm. um, so that's built in. I built in a 2% raise for me, 5% for Destiny. So and I, I echo what Keith says. Um, this commission, you know, the various boards over the last eight years that I've been county attorney have been very, very generous and very, very good to work with. 
and you know I think you've recognized the need for an appropriate salary um, I like Keith I you know I'll just whatever Keith said I, I join in so it's the best way to put it <laughs> it's, instead of you know beating a dead horse but but you know I got Destiny here just so she can explain a little bit about you know what's going on from her perspective because she's doing all the adult criminal prosecutions. Now what I'm doing is I'm still handling my regular cases from before she started and old probation violation cases, but anything new in the last two years, she has done the complaint, she's worked the case all the way through. Go ahead, Destiny. So um, it sounds like Jermaine had um, passed around kind of the statistics that I put together. That was just a sheet I put together quickly last night. Um, looking at the first page, that is everything that I'm dealing with right now. Those are all my open pending cases. Those are all cases that need work on right now. Um, there's 111 total cases. Most of those, uh, 79 of them, are felony level offenses. Um, the interesting part about my present caseload is that we are dealing with a lot of high level offenses. These are first, second, third degree drug crimes, our first, second, third degree assault and other violent crimes. Um, you'll see there's a, there's a couple of kidnapping crimes, one criminal vehicular homicide. Those types of offenses do require a significant amount more time. Um, they're a lot more work than your run of the mill, low level, fifth degree felony level drug possession crime. So that's one thing that's really transitioned since I've, I've been here the last couple of years. We have seen a few more of those kinds of cases. Um, but overall, um, like I said, there's about 79 felony cases, 12 gross misdemeanors, um, 12 misdemeanors. The lower level misdemeanor and gross misdemeanor um, cases tend to turn over pretty quickly. So those I'm able to run through and get settled usually within six months, maybe maybe a year. Max felony level cases can um, take commonly a year, two years to actually process through the whole system. So a lot of these um, numbers are from 2021 cases as well. And uh, you'll see if you flip to the next page, um, 2022, these are all the cases that were opened this year so far. Um, again, 79 felony cases, 23 gross misdemeanors to in total, 27 misdemeanors, and a handful of petty traffic offenses. Um, towards the bottom, I also included other cases that were open but have warrants pending, so we don't know where these defendants are, and essentially they could pop up at any time, and we'd have to continue on with that case as well. Um, Comparing that to 2021, uh, we did have more cases. We had 206 total cases with 108 felonies, 40 gross misdemeanors, 26 misdemeanors, and still about 14 petty traffic offenses. Again, we have 18 warrants left over from 2021 that could pop up, and we'd have to continue work on those cases whenever they do. <coughs> um, so like I said, the trend is we have, we have fewer offenses this year, but they're more <coughs> serious, so they still take quite a bit of time. And um, so you guys are aware, uh, one comment that we hear often from the judge in our county who works both um, Pipestone County and Rock County is that Pipestone County has usually two to three times more cases than than Rock County. Um, I chalk that up to a very zealous law enforcement. Um, if you go out and look for something, you're going to find it. Um, and as we've heard a few times over, we have a very good sheriff's office. Um, but that's just something um, to compare, uh, being that Rock County is of comparable population. We have twice as much work. Um, and then Another fact for you to know, for best practices for legal standards, um, it's recommended that a full-time prosecutor handle 80 
felony level cases. Um, that's full time. Um, and that's the more severe uh, felonies. But um, comparing our numbers, uh, we have 79 felony cases and we're part time. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to be aware of and, and considering the budget and the need for another assistant county attorney down the line because we would definitely need that. Um, when you say part time, how part time are you? <laughs> um, I'd say I routinely attribute 30 to 35 hours a week doing criminal matters. So nearly full time. <laughs> you know when when i started put it in perspective if i had 35 open files at one time that was pretty much the norm for about 10 11 12 years and last year i kind of told you where we were at and what like a 10 11 year average was for formal complaints and you look at the felonies and gross misdemeanors that destiny's talking those are usually the formal complaints i would do on average 85 to 90 a year and it's been, it's, you know, it's not a trend. It's the norm now that we, our office is doing 120 to 140 formal complaints a year. It's, it's up and, you know, and if you add every now and then these misdemeanors, they don't just get issued a citation, they get long form to us. So, I mean, there's work out there. And like Destiny said, if she's doing 30 to 35 hours a week, pretty much full time. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, every now and then I check. This year I didn't take the time to look at how many things they had going on in Rock and Murray um, and other comparable counties around us. Um, when they did have this um, fiasco of a mess up with the county attorney's office over in Jackson County a little while ago, I, lo I looked at theirs. They were a full-time office. Their caseload that they had pending, you know, open felonies and gross misdemeanors was half of what we had. So... It's, it's obvious, like I said, a couple of years you've been with us that, that you jumped in with both feet. You, you hit the ground running here, and it's very much appreciated. Oh, she's done great. Integral part of the group. She's done great. I told her just don't leave until I retire. That, that's, <laughs> that, that was going to be my point. You can't, just like Keith, you can't leave either, so you're going to be here forever. So. <laughs> Are you getting pretty well acclimated uh, to the community and so forth? And um, Yeah. Uh, I bought a house here last year, so I've lived here for a little over a year now. Um, it's nice. My family's all from the area, so... I guess I didn't, didn't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> well, we appreciate having you and, and being a part of the team. So, Thank you. Any questions? Is it time for a motion? I make a motion we accept his recommendation of 2% for himself and 5% for destiny. However you want to word that. And I will second that. Any further discussion? We say we appreciate the work you do, and uh, thank you for that, both of you. Hearing none. I'm glad All to in help. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you, Destiny, too. Thank you both. Don't leave, please. Mr. Chairman, we have just a few more minutes, as long as Domain's here. Um, I have the two uh, legal contract for chip services domain in here. Yeah. Uh, one for uh, Runchy Luwaji and Wellman, the other one to uh, Kayla Johnson from Smith & Johnson. Um, these are the same verbiage from last year and previous years. The only thing has changed under the dates. So it would be for the year 2023. I figure if we do it this way, I can we'll speed it up. The board approves it here. We can send it off and get signatures, and if that's okay with that way before I came down I had already signed off on it okay and I I dropped my original hard copies up at court administration you know within half an hour ago for Natalie to sign so she's got my signature she's got the one with uh, Amy Ashman's uh, signature on there and with Kayla Johnson's signature too so I don't know if you the board wants to approve it we can just kind of pile the signature pages together um, versus one document going around that'd be fine yeah you move for approval I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Yeah, that's that's not a bad deal. I mean, it's the hourly rate year. is lower than most attorneys <laughs> around the area. Well, it's going to be under another year. It's going to have an increase from last year. So, 
Plus, you, you can trust both of them. They know what they're doing. And they're not going to waste the court's time. You're right. Okay, strange. Bill. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Bill. Um, today I'm bringing a, a purchase request for an additional component to our dark trace product that we use. Um, last year we we moved ahead and went with dark trace contract for another three years through 26, and that's started this year. Um, We'd looked at this a couple times before. They've, they've changed the name a couple times. It's called Response now, or Respond. Um, we're getting, this, this quote is about half of what it had been in the past. And what this would allow our dark trace to do is shut something down automatically as it's happening versus just notifying myself and Bridget that there's something potentially bad going on take a look at it um, with the speed at which things happen now um, I think this is just just uh, very important for us to, to move ahead with um, it, it will help m minimize any kind of risk from bad things because you know like like I've said often there we're just one click away from a real bad day or or week at least for the IT department. Um, I don't know if you... So we already have the prevent and detect portions? We have detect. Okay. Yep. Um, we kind of do the prevent. The prevent part is kind of a new a new feature of theirs that is, is kind of from what we have. We have an older version, which, which they just call AI Intel, and it, it kind of looks at at things that come in and compares them to, to other things that's seen. Um, so is the monitoring all done then through artificial intelligence or is there a human being that also looks at some of these things? It's all AI. Yep, yep it's all AI. So we got this uh, five, five years ago yeah. and we had it in place for about six months and it learned what goes on on our network. It learned what normal is, mm -hmm. right? And then from that point on, then it said, okay, that's what normal is. If anything is outside of this, then uh, you know, tell, tell Bill about it, tell Bridget about it. And it alerts me right to my phone. Yep. But you said now it's gonna be proactive, so now instead of just alerting you, it's gonna actually shut something it, it'll down. It'll shut so. stuff off. Yep. Right. So, I mean, there'll be a little bit of a hassle with that too, because of course it's gonna shut down things that, that are, are needed or are necessary too. But yeah, but it gives you an opportunity to actually review it to, and, and, and to get onto it before yeah, right. things happen. What did we pay for this last year? Did you say? So we're paying twelve thousand a year right now, and this will add an additional six thousand on top of that annually, and then this will run through the end of our, our through the end of twenty six. And we'll see whether we keep going with it. At this point, I don't see why we wouldn't keep going with it. It's and it, it, it's hard for me to quantitate that, uh, so I, I'll I'll have to take your recommendation uh, uh, whether or not this is a reasonable fee for what we're paying for. I understand that software is expensive. Um, I I let them know every time they send us a quote too. I said, hey, we're just a small county out here, nine thousand people. You know, this has to really make sense for us, and and they they do. They do um, really take kindly on, on small small counties. So then I assume that you're recommending that we approve this $12,000 expenditure? 6,000, right, yep, six, it's gonna be 18 additional. total for the three years, yep. 6,000 a year. The additional, so 18 okay. a year. Correct. <laughs> and this, Mr. Chairman, just one other thing too, is that Bill is absolutely right. If something happens to us and we are hit and we are in trouble, this is really cheap. Yep. Right. You don't don't look at it like it's an expense. This is almost like an insurance. Yep. Right. Very cheap. And insurance. we are constantly being bombarded. Hit so, all the time. Yep. Yeah. All the time. Yep. Can't believe how many times a day. It's just, oh, it's, it's right. constant. Yep. Right. Right. Thousands of times per hour. 
and we, we live in and breathe and die by our IT system. So if we lose it, we have big troubles. So and, and that's why I not entrust, our line. I entrust Bill and, and Bill says we need it. Yes. I'll move that we go <laughs> ahead and approve it, Bill. I'll support it. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Ten thirty. Yeah, we're close enough. Nick. Thank you, Domain. Perfect. So oh, that's right. Change More seats. More work to do. Yeah. <laughs> Warm up another chair. bid opening for our um, first contract of box culverts for uh, 2023 looks like we have six bids which is good um, if you look at the back of your uh, bid tab it'll show the locations of these bids they're all tucked up in the northwest corner of the county there um, uh, sm smaller, on average, probably smaller structures than these, um, but nonetheless still important. So, so uh, first bid is from Midwest Contracting with Marshall. Their bid is one million one hundred fifty-five thousand nine hundred forty-five dollars and zero cents. One million one hundred fifty-five thousand nine hundred forty-five dollars and zero cents. Next bid is Gladden Construction out of Laporte, Minnesota. Their bid, $1,312,568.62. Next bid is John Riley Construction out of Morris, Minnesota. Their bid, $1,261,687.43. Next bid, <coughs> construction out of Marshall. Who was it? RNG construction out of Marshall. They're one of our regulars. <laughs> Their 
Their bid, $1,107,166. $1,107,166, even. Next bid is Landware Construction out of St. Cloud. bid is from ANC excavating out of Marshall. Their bid is one million one hundred seventeen thousand eight hundred forty two dollars and twenty cents. One million one hundred seventeen thousand eight hundred forty two dollars and twenty cents. I guess I can't ever remember having all the bids, six bids come so close. <laughs> yeah, well, I got some bad news to follow that. Um, when we submitted these estimates, the state said, take a good look at them, think about them. We're seeing prices go through the rough. We used prices we had been seeing and we have a long history of boxes with all the ones we've been doing. We felt we put a pretty decent increase on them. And our estimate was $685,243. So we're not even close. So, um, think I would like to hold off on any decision here um, we should go back make sure we didn't miss an estimate or something but um, I also probably want to make some phone calls to the state because when it's this far off like eh, I don't really feel comfortable recommending proceed proceeding so that would be my recommendation I guess to, to hold off on any award until we can do some more homework that's fine okay you mentioned some of our regulars Henning uh, and Larson both, but especially Henning the last few years has been pretty competitive. Had you heard from yep. them at all? Well, they got plans. Um, they didn't really call and ask any questions, so we um, we kind of suspected they weren't going to bid, but um, you, you never know, too. So, um, One thing I will add, with all of these prices so close, it makes me a little worried that it's just our estimate that's off. So, um, We'll have to decide if we want to proceed with things and if we can come up with the money for them. So, um, which I, I think we can. It might just mean some of the other things we wanted to do this year. We'll have to wait a year. Some of the other culverts. So, I just <clears throat> well mentioned. I talked to uh, Joe Persky, a commissioner from Stearns County, and they had just bid on some, just getting some culverts, you know, concrete. And their estimate was one hundred and sixty nine thousand, and uh, their price came in at four twenty three. Okay. Um, some of the newer ones that the state sent us, for example, to worry about or to look at, um, I believe one of them, if I remember right, had a pretty tight timeline, and the other was let by itself. So we thought maybe with the close proximity, we'd be doing better, but. 
I want to think on this one for a while. I think that's mm -hmm. the right thing to do. So. Mm -hmm. What's your estimate again? Six hundred eighty-five thousand two hundred forty-three dollars. So, um, so if it's all right, we'd like to come back in two weeks and uh, talk about it some more. Also, Nick, just just thinking out loud, because there's been such a huge increase in concrete culverts, is there all is there an alternative that we can use? Would would galvanized work in some of these cases? Or, or are they with price of steel? Will there be no savings there either? Well, I, I don't know. The life expectancy is the problem, and then right. these are all yeah. bridge structures, so they're it take a lot of other pipe to right to you know to make the and instead of going precast, I'm sure it's just it would be ridiculous to actually try to pour on site, wouldn't it? The cost would be just through the roof. I that. think. Um, I think South Dakota does that, like that frame construction yeah. that did our bridges. I believe they do a lot of that in South Dakota, but I don't. I never ask what size they are. So, it, would it be be worth at least looking to see if it would be comparable to pour on site, or with, with the labor cost and again the cost of concrete, and of course the availability of concrete has been difficult <laughs> too. And um, I could check. I doubt we're going to get anything down around that area. We yeah. we were hoping to see, but. Um, hard to check I guess so the, these particular spots the, like I said these were the, these these uh, five were smaller ones up in the corner uh, how how urgent is it where where are they at on our inspection report um I'd want to relook at them before I answer that I think I because you, you possible I can down the road on this but at the same time if this increase is 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 temporary, if it's going to be if it's going to moderate somewhat, great. But maybe it's just going to keep climbing. We we don't know. Right. Um, two of them are for for the township, so that's kind of their decision, you know, um, in a way, I guess. But um, there's just a lot more for me to think about, I guess, before I um, before I say too much. I think, but. Um, but you know, what I am comfortable saying now is like I, I don't think we should award now. I want to I want to do some more homework on this. I appreciate talk that. to somebody at the state yeah. first. So. Well, thank you, Nick. But I guess I kept looking all the time. I've never seen a few <laughs> hundred dollars separation in six years. <coughs> yeah, they're they are. So what we get one oh seven to three twelve or. One million one oh seven to one million three twelve. I mean, or either way, that's especially the one oh seven to one seventeen. That's yeah. pretty close for your two lowest. You look at the percentage wise on that. That's incredibly close. So mm -hmm. <laughs> procedurally, do we need to specifically move to table this at this point, or do we have to move to to accept Nick's recommendation? How do we do that for the minutes? Um, I would. I've never had to do this before, but I would probably. First thing that comes to my mind would be to table it for two weeks until I can find more information and have a firm recommendation. Okay. Maybe just to cover ourselves. You know. How long are these bids good for? I don't know. I don't. I'd have to look. I've never run into this before, so I've never had to dig into that. And we probably don't want to move to throw out all these bids. No. Just strictly no. table at this point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can look at that too and. See if it's. I would think they'd be good for a while because there have been times where we've waited two weeks to approve on federal one. stuff. We have yeah. to get their approval before we can award anyway. Right. So. Right. Right. So they've got to be good for a while. So maybe just to protect ourselves, that I'll move that we table a decision on these bids at this time and, and just leave it open ended as far as this length of time that we're going to leave it. One votes. Should we put the twenty seventh on there? Right, I, that's date. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Until December 20th, that's our next meeting. Okay. Yep, I'll know by then. Okay. I'd second that. Move yeah. to table until the 27th. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All the bonds check out? All the bonds check okay. out. Good news. All right, well. Mm. Uh, Thank you, Nick. homework. If you do find that there's that much inflation, that really makes our five-year plan change. Oh, that's going to change a lot of things. <clears throat> yeah, shoot. Oh.
Okay, well, anything else for me? Otherwise, that's all I have for the day. We'll check it out. All right, thank you, Nick. Have a good day. You bet. Thank, thank you, Nick. Thank you. I don't Come see you. You have the holiday season. Oh, oh, cool. On the back page, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Personnel is taken care of. Uh, Ace Joint Powers Agreement. Okay. Sounds good. Get that shot in there. That's fine. Thank you. What's that? Excuse me. Ace, po Ace. Joint Powers. Yep. Uh, Michelle Baumgartner sent me a copy of Amendment Number Three for the Ace Agreement, which is. Uh, showing that Pipestone County is joining in their joint powers agreement and the amounts that we're paying based on, and we already know this, this is in our budget for 23. Our contribution is estimated at 50,626 and then our initial membership fee of 35 cents per capita of 94.24 population for an initial fee of 32.99. And that amount, those amounts are in our budget for 2023. And so all the counties, if you flip it over, all the counties involved in ACE will have to sign this amendment. So uh, by this, we're signing that we're going to be with ACE and we're agreeing to amendment number three of our county joining at the stated rate. And again, that amount is in our 2023 budget. So, looking for a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve this contract with ACE. There a second. I'll support it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. As I mentioned last night, then we did hire a person here locally. Then yeah. she'll be starting January second. Jill Touring. Good choice. Mm -hmm. I know Jill. Okay. Work for Family Services. Yep. Then uh, the Health and Human Service lease agreement. Chairman, the only changes to this are the dates. The prices are the same. And our agreement, you will recall, is they pay us a lease payment and also pay for utilities out there as well. Uh, they are not renewing the IT agreement, which we've had in force for several years. The reason they're not uh, renewing that is they are fully staffed in their IT departments and that's not needed anymore. And that was a uh, amount of, I think it was eighty seven fifty a year. It was not a, a huge item. Uh, bill is still available if they need help, but we just do it on an hourly basis if right. something needed to be done. So, Does the utility amount cover the increased cost of utilities? Yes. Okay. Yep. And does this compare favorably with what other counties are charging? No, or? it's totally different. Yeah, we've tried to get a handle on that. And between the six counties and health and human services, the facilities are completely different. And, and uh, I, I, I've asked for that too. And I just don't think there's any way we can get an apples to apples comparison. We've got some in courthouses. We have some standalones. No. Is there a big difference or? If, if you look at it strictly by square foot, yes. But again, you can't look at it by square foot. And then I think we're the only contract that Health and Human Services pays for utilities. Correct. Where the other ones' utilities are included. So it, it, it's really skewed. I think we just have to kind of look at what the market is for office space and say this is comparable to that and not get into a big comparison between us and the other five, the other five counties that make up. I think you get a county like Lincoln, the square footage rental rate is a lot lower Right. Than it would be like Marshall or Redwood. Oh, yeah. yeah, Marshall would be a big difference. Yeah, but no, it's, that's a, a very good point, and we've discussed it at length. And there's just as no, there's no real. Everything's all up. over the board. Kind of like trying to change a state formula. Yeah. Well, that and the, if we say took a ten percent increase, we're going to get billed back in our levy yeah. to help pay for it anyway. Of course. Right. So we it, will. But in a, in a in method, there's money that, that comes back. Some in. of that is billable to the various grants too. Right. So it, it wouldn't all fall back on it. But yes, it's still it's still tax dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our the uh, basic rent information is uh, item four, page two. So you can see that we're getting 
uh, fifty-eight thousand dollars for the twelve months, thirty-eight for rent, and twenty thousand for utilities and and maintenance on that. Yeah, I I feel comfortable with it. So, Mr. Chair, I'll go ahead and move that we uh, authorize this uh, lease agreement then for twenty twenty-three with Health Human Services. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Appreciate that and get that off, out the door to them. Uh, <coughs> retention, Steve. Mr. Chairman, I would like to add two part-time jail staff that um, unfortunately when we were going through the retention program. I, I missed them and was not by any intention. Believe me, had discussions with both of them, Mr. Wusso and Mr. Warner on that. I discussed it at length with uh, Kathy as well. And it's like you try to do something and you try to look at all variables and invariably something slips through and this one did. Uh, these, these two gentlemen are, as I wrote on here, a very important part of jail operations. They put in a, a, a lot of time when needed. They are not scheduled as our other retention plan was at 16 hours per week every week. They are there, something happens in the middle of the night, something happens in the middle of the day, they need to transport. Uh, these guys are available. Steve sometimes isn't available in the, in the springtime due to farming, but uh, these two definitely deserve something. So uh, Kathy and I talked about it. We came up with, yes, uh, they work a minimum of 300 hours, but less than 16 hours a week in 2022, and they were employed with the county as of January 1st of 2022. And, uh, given that, we would recommend that they would be uh, the retention payment of $1,000 to them. Not the same as being a full time or the 16 hours, which is 1500 but and also they're not just, not just necessarily temporary part time either. Uh, there are two other part time jailers that were hired after January 2nd that worked the minimum of 300 hours but less than 16, and they're receiving 750 They were on the list that we had before. So, again, that's it was a inadvertent uh, miss when we were going through here and to make it right to show that they are valuable to the county they're much appreciated uh, to use another uh, two thousand dollars of the, the ARPA money to uh, give them a retention bonus too I needed to act on this at this meeting because we want to get those payments out the door by this Friday right so the recommendation would be to approve pending the board's approval move for approval and I will second that all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm glad that we uh, had the, uh, the, the uh, awareness and flexibility to correct what was a very obvious yes. unintended yeah. oversight. So. Too bad it took two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>